الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وآله الطاهرين I'd like to share a hadith that says من تعلم لله وعامل لله وعلم لله دعي في ملكوت السماوات ولي من أولياء الله Whoever learns for the sake of God and acts does actions for the sake of God and teaches for the sake of God, they will be called in the malakut, in the sovereignty of the heavens as one of God's saints. This is a very powerful hadith that should inspire us to uh, see things differently as far as pursuing knowledge and becoming talib ilm and how inspiring it is for us to be able to learn for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and act upon whatever it is that we are learning for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also teach for the sake of Allah alima amila allama these three elements are very very important and that's exactly what a Hausa student does in general a Hausa student has his first and foremost priority in learning as much as he can or she can you know dedicating as many hours as possible you know that's why I said you know Hausa isn't everyone's piece of cake it's not something that any person is able to do if you can't see yourself really if you can't see yourself spending a minimum of seven to eight hours a day solid studying then Hawza is not going to be for you or you're not going to really be able to get somewhere you know in the previous episode I was I finished off by speaking about that level of humbleness and humility that a person has you know you're gonna learn and you're gonna teach and you're gonna practice but if you don't do that third one which is practicing what's the point of all of this that you are learning you know where are you going to get to if you are someone who is branded as a mischievous person and someone who is, has no reverence or respect for others who are around you and that's that's what reminds me of a hadith uh, from Imam Hussein alayhi salam where he says uh, in defining what adab is in defining what mannerism is it is that you leave your house فَلَا تُلْقِي أَحَدًا and you don't meet anyone you don't meet any person إِلَّا وَرَأَيْتَ لَهُ الْفَضْلُ عَلَيْكِ without you not seeing that they have virtue over you they have merit over you يعني they are better, better than you Yani Imam Hussein alayhi salam here is defining what adab is, what mannerism is. And he is saying that whenever you leave your house and you come across someone, you never see you, yourself to be better than them. You always see them to be better than you. Whether it be them being better than you in their innocence, whether them be better, being there, better than you in their knowledge, whether them being better than you in their sincerity, whatever it may be. If we use this kind of approach in our lives, there will be so many different changes as far as our outlook and our behavior and also that, that nafs that we have, instead of feeding it towards the negative, we're going to be feeding it towards uh, the positive. And that's why we should always remember as Hausa students that we need to manage our lives in the best ways possible. If you can't manage yourself, if you don't have a way of controlling your ifrat and tafrit, how are you going to be sharing information with others? How are you going to be sitting on that minbar and saying, Ya ayyuhan nas, do this and do that, and you can't do it yourself? If you don't have respect for time, if you don't have respect for people, if you can't honor an appointment, if you can't do something as simple as read books and memorize things what are you doing you know if you can't pray on time if you can't wake up for salatul fajr if you can't have 
a strong relationship with the Quran. If you can't dedicate time to be visiting the holy shrine that you are living in the proximity of, then what's, what makes you so different to any other random person? You know? And that's why management is extremely important. You know, that we have that level of understanding that we don't go to any kind of extreme. And in, uh, extreme means I, uh, one of two sides of the extreme. That's why we say ifrat and tafriyat. You know, you don't want to be anti-social where you seclude yourself and you become a hermit and you have no kind of social interaction whatsoever. At the same time, you don't want to be someone who is always out there and always with people and never having a time for yourself. You know, that's one way of two, one side of an extreme, the other side of the extreme. No, have the middle, be the middle. And that's exactly what akhlaq is going to give you. Our ulama, our teachers, all of them, they said, yes, you should be learning fiqh. Yes, you should be learning usul. Yes, you should be learning tafsir. Yes, you should be doing all of these other uloom. But the most important is akhlaq. Attend as many akhlaq lessons as you can. And there's no ifrat in learning about akhlaq as well. And this is where you are going to be able to know how you uh, need to pursue your um, balance. You want to learn and gain knowledge, absolutely fine. But not at the cost of falling out when it comes to your ibadah. You want to do your ibadah, but not at the cost of falling out with interacting with other people. You can't say, well, I'm going to be doing five hours of ibadah and I don't want to do any studying. I want to do studying, but I don't want to socialize. I want to socialize, but I'm not going to be able to do any of these things. No, that doesn't make sense. Balance is very, very important. Because as um, it says, you need to make sure that you are able to find a correct kind of planning for your time. You know, when do you wake up for your studies? What time do you wake up in the morning? When are you able to uh, do your mubahatha? When are you able to do your reviewing of your uh, studies? When are you able to have time for your family? When are you able to have free time for yourself? When are you able to do your ibadat? All of these things need management. And if you, ke you keep on saying to yourself, oh yeah, you know, I haven't been to the Haram of Sayyidah Ma'asuma alayha for over 10 days. What am I going to do about it? There's a lot that you're able to do about. There's many things that you can do in, uh, for you to rectify this particular problem. And it's, very, it's critically dangerous for a person to have some kind of incorrect uh, balance in any of these things when it comes to ifrat or tafriyat. Stay focused, uh, a, a Hausa student needs to stay focused in their uh, direction and not jump everywhere and go here and there and find easy way out, ways out and be confused as to what it is that they want to, um, for example, study or uh, specialize in. And of course, I haven't spoken about um, the uh, specialized classes that a person wants to get into, you know. In the Hawza, there is the Durus uh, Umumi that you are going to be studying, you know, your Muqaddimat, uh, for example. And in the continuation after your Muqaddimat, you know, there are also going to be the, your main Durus. You know, in your Muqaddimat, you're going to be doing a lot of Nahu. You're going to be doing logic. You're going to Nahu is gra grammar, Arabic grammar. You're going to be doing a lot of Nahu. You're going to be doing logic. You're going to be doing some aqaid. You're going to be doing some fiqh. You know, then you're going to be doing some uh, sarf and balagha. And you're going to be doing some usul. And 
philosophy and tafsir and akhlaq. You're going to be studying these adjacent to one another. You know, and then after that, you're going to enter into uh, more kind of uh, important um, stage in your studies, which is we, we mentioned that them to be the sutuh. And that's when you're going to be doing two or three main subjects. You know, your first and your second is going to be fiqh and usul. Fiqh and usul will, will be your first and second. Then your third is going to be some other kind of main subject that you are going to be studying. You know, you might be doing a main subject in philosophy or your main subject in tafsir or a main subject in hadith or a main subject in some other kind of area. You might want to have one more lesson or two more lessons, but nothing more than four at most when you're entering into that, into that level. And then you're going to realize that you have an area of interest that you like, that you want to specialize in. You, that might be history, that might be philosophy, that might be irfan, that might be tafsir, that might be hadith, that might be theology, that might be uh, other kind of studies that are um, relevant, you know, one, one, one way or another, Islamic psychology, Islamic sociology, or any of the other ulum that might be uh, available. But the thing is, is that, you know, you need to remember that you won't be able to make that decision in the very beginning of your Hausa classes and entering into the Hausa. You know, that it's going to take a little bit of time, you know, it might take three years or four years for you to become acquainted with the different ulum and then for you to enter into the takhassusi arena and specialize in one or two uh, particular uh, areas. And when you do enter into that um, field, you need to always remember that you have an aim, you have an uh, object, ob objective. You want to do this for the sake of this particular reason or that particular purpose. And of course, that's very, very important for um, you to uh, become a familiar with, you know. And the only way that you are going to uh, be able to do this is not only finding what you like as far as your inner talent, your interest, your personal interest is concerned, but also making sure that you consult with uh, experts, consult with your elders, consult with your mentor, consult with someone who is taking care of you. As we said, you know, there's, you need to have someone. You need to have someone that you trust, that you rely on, who is going to be involving himself in your public kind of ulum and studies and, and also in your personal life as well. You know, he's going to say to you, study Lum'a, don't study that other book, you know, or study that other book, don't study Lum'a, or whatever example that we may be able to give. But you need to have that, l that kind of person in your, in your life as a uh, Hausa student. And you're going to be asking a lot of questions, you know. Um, uh, there are so many ahadith that we have from Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam Let me read this one that is really, really nice um, from Imam Ali alayhi salam. Of course, um, ilm itself is like in a storage room. وَمِفْتَاحُهُ السُّؤَالِ As the hadith says, yani that the key to enter into the realm of knowledge is asking your question. Of course, there are adab of, for asking a question. It's al tafaquhan, ask out of wanting to understand. Wala ta'sal ta'annutan, don't ask uh, out of arrogance or be wanting to, you know, question your your teacher or for the sake of just random criticism or something like that. Imam Ali alayhi salam he says. من أحسن السؤال علم. If you are able to present your question in the best form possible, with with humbleness, with genuinity, with uh, wanting to really know, and with sincerity as well, من أحسن السؤال علم. Then you're gonna know. Then you're going to find out. 
ومن علم أحسن السؤال and if you know if you've reached knowledge then you are going to be presenting questions in the best form possible not random irrelevant questions not questions based on ignorance or arrogance you know no a genuine question that will really benefit and that's why rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi says al ilm khaza'in wa mafatihuhu as su'al the ilm are is storages or containers wa mafatihuhu and the keys to uh, this is asking a question fas'alu rahimakum allah so ask your questions by allah have mercy on you fa innahu tu'jar arba there are four people that are who are, are going to be rewarded as-sa'il the person asking wal mutakallim the speaker wal mustami' the listener wal muhibbu lahum and the person who loves them so four people are going to benefit from that one question one person is asking a question and four people will be rewarded by this one question so you of course obviously you're going to be doing a lot of reading and you're going to be uh, you're going to have to make sure that you are perseverant in your um, studies and also have, have as I was as I said having that balance having that balance you know it makes absolutely no sense that you are studying right and then uh, salat al fajr passes and you're sleeping for example or you're studying and you're so into your studies and you're participating in the lesson that you delay your the the mm, virtuous time for salah what are the qualities of a good hausa student i wrote these points down and i would like to share with them number one, that i be disciplined that i have discipline i've disciplined myself in the strictest ways possible read these stories of of our ulama who would you know break ice just to do wudu uh, even though they had access to hot water who would always go against their nafs who would make sure that they have the highest level of spiritual connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they're never lazy and never negligence you know you got stories of these contemporary ulama not ulama hundreds of years ago not contemporary ulama who never even had holidays except for two days Eid al-Fitr and Ashra Muharram nothing other than that even when they were sick even then when they were ma got married even w one day after their marriage they went and they attended durus their durus and their lessons in the hausa that's being disciplined that's being sincere and genuine that's being serious in your studies number two, strict with your ibadat and you can't be a hausa student or represent the uh, ahlul bayt kind of teachings if you yourself haven't gone through um, ibadat and don't focus on ibadat or you delay your salah and you're careless about halal and haram i mentioned the example of you know you being a hausa student but you having a dirty tongue it makes absolutely no sense you know how is someone going to be able to pray behind you if you know you are negligent when it comes to your rizq your money your halal your haram what you eat where you go and all of these other things so you know a hausa student needs to have their own ibadah program number three showing the highest level of reverence and respect to your parents making sure that you serve your parents you honor your parents because that's what will give you tawfiq honoring and serving your parents and making sure that your parents are happy with you along with your parents your teachers as well along with your teachers your kin doing salat al-rahim where you have good relationship with your relatives where you are connected with your relatives as well you, as you know qat al-rahim severing your ties with your with your kin is itself 
one of the major sins. Also, people don't think your relatives, your family members, your immediate family members, your siblings, your, your blood, don't see you in a bad way or a negative way, that you are a complex person, that you're hard to deal with, that you are a troublemaker, that you are mu'aqad, as they say. No, that they see you as a humble person, as an approachable person, as a nice person. They want you in their company. They want you in their company. Even though it might mean that sometimes, you know, you've got to do a little bit of things within the parameters of the sharia, but for the sake of a greater good. And number four is your social presence. That you are present there, actively present in a positive way, that you're contributing good to those who are around you. You know, that you understand your duty of amr bil ma'roof wa nahi an munkar, but you're doing it in a pr correct way in a positive way, that you're not beca being, becoming a burden on those who are around you in the community, that you're not someone who is mischievous and making fitna, and you're someone who always has a smile on his face and a, a, a genuine smile on his face, that he or she as a Hawza student, someone who's representing the Hawza, you're kind and gentle and you're good akhlaq, and you're staying away from any kind of ifrat or the next session will be the last session. I'm sure that there are other things that we are able to talk about, but I'll just have one more episode in this uh, program in regards to uh, Hausa uh, students encouraging whoever is potentially able to join the Hausa and also some pointers as far as how we are able to be successful in studying in Al Hausa Al Ilmiya. والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وآله الطاهرين